December 7, 1941. Commander Minoru Genda stands on the deck of the carrier Akaji, watching his planes disappear toward Pearl Harbor. He is the architect of the attack, a man who has calculated every variable. He knows the number of American ships, their patrol routes, their defenses. His plan is a masterpiece of precision, built on one single foundational assumption, a number. A number that has been checked and double-checked by the highest levels of the Imperial Japanese Navy. And that number was catastrophically wrong. The Japanese High Command's entire war plan was based on this calculation. By the end of 1943, the U.S. Navy would consist of, at most, 300,000 enlisted men. The reality? By the end of 1943, America had 2.3 million naval personnel. Japan hadn't just miscalculated. They were off by nearly 800%. It was a failure of imagination so vast, so arrogant, that it doomed the entire empire before the first bomb ever fell. This isn't a story of a battle. This is the story of the deadliest math error in history. The fatal flaw wasn't a lack of information. They had the data. In March 1941, a brilliant young intelligence officer, Ensign Takeo Yoshikawa, was sent to Honolulu disguised as a diplomat. He was Japan's master spy. Yoshikawa worked tirelessly. He took tourist harbor tours, rented small planes to photograph military bases, and memorized every ship's movement. He fed a constant stream of accurate, high-quality intelligence back to Tokyo. The problem wasn't the spy. It was the analysts in Tokyo. They looked at Yoshikawa's data through a lens of profound cultural arrogance. To them, America was a chaotic, decadent, mongrel nation of shopkeepers incapable of the discipline and spiritual will, the Bushido, of Japan. When they counted the American ships, they assumed the crews required to man them were the same as their own, lean, efficient, and small. They couldn't conceive of a nation that would or could mobilize millions. In Japan, naval intelligence was considered a lesser duty, a job for men not fit for sea command. When analyst reports contradicted the high command's warrior spirit, the reports were ignored. Japan's grand strategy was built on this fantasy. Strike hard, cripple the American fleet, seize the oil-rich territories of Southeast Asia, and build a defensive ring. They believed that by the time the soft Americans rebuilt their fleet, they would have no will to fight a long, bloody war and would sue for peace. The plan was a house of cards, and the first gust of wind blew at the Battle of the Coral Sea in 1942. Japanese observers were stunned. They knew the Americans had two carriers in the area, which, by their calculations, meant about 4,000 sailors. But radio intercepts revealed over 8,000 men, twice what was expected. The analysts in Tokyo dismissed it. It must be inefficiency, they said. The Americans are just wasteful. Then came Midway. The American carrier Yorktown was hit by bombs and torpedoes. By Japanese standards, it was a mortal blow. The ship should have sunk in minutes. But to their disbelief, American damage control crews, hundreds of them, a swarm far larger than any Japanese crew, had the fires out and the flight deck patched in hours. When intelligence later recovered Yorktown's crew list, they were horrified. It listed 2,200 names, 50% more than their estimates. This meant more mechanics, more repair teams, more pilots, more everything. Still, Tokyo refused to change the number. Then came Guadalcanal, August 1942. This was the moment the fatal math error stopped being theoretical and became a meat grinder. Japan expected a small, token American force. Instead, 16,000 U.S. Marines landed, supported by an armada of 30,000 sailors. Japanese submarines, shadowing the supply lines, sent back frantic, unbelievable reports. The American convoys never stopped. More ships, more men, more supplies. It defied all logic. Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, the one man who had studied at Harvard and actually understood America, sent a panicked message to Tokyo. He warned that the Americans were fielding forces far beyond any pre-war prediction. He knew the truth. Japan's estimates were disastrously wrong. Tokyo finally ordered a re-evaluation. For weeks, Analysts pored over captured documents, radio intercepts, and prisoner interrogations. The new report was quietly submitted to the Navy minister. The numbers were horrifying. 
America already had 1.8 million sailors and was projected to hit 2.4 million. The conclusion was inescapable. Japan was fighting an enemy with 10 times its manpower capacity. The war was, by every mathematical and industrial measure, unwinnable. What did the high command do with this truth? They buried it. The report was classified at the highest possible level, seen by only a handful of officers. It was too dangerous to share. If the commanders and soldiers learned the war was hopeless, morale would collapse. The warrior spirit had to be protected from the facts. And so the war continued, a ghost already decided by a math error made years before. Japan's greatest admirals were sent into battles they had no mathematical chance of winning. At the Battle of the Philippine Sea in 1944, the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot, Japan threw everything it had left, nine carriers and 450 aircraft. It was their last hope for a decisive battle. The Americans brought 15 carriers, 100 escort ships, and 70,000 sailors in that one task force. Japan's entire navy, at the start of the war, was less than 400,000 men. The result was a slaughter. Japan lost three carriers and nearly all of its irreplaceable veteran pilots. The Americans lost 29 planes. Their carriers were back at full strength within days. Japan's greatest defeat wasn't at Midway or Leyte Gulf. It was in a quiet intelligence office in Tokyo, years before the war began. They had all the data. They had spies on the ground. But they saw the world only through their own lens, blinded by an arrogant belief in their own superiority. They assumed the enemy would fight like them, build like them, and think like them. They were wrong. America was an industrial giant, a sleeping monster of mobilization that could turn farmers into sailors and car factories into bomber plants overnight. By the time the truth was finally accepted, it no longer mattered. The war was already lost, not by a bomb or a bullet, but by the single, fatal number they got wrong.